Okay, are we recording yet? Yes, we are, yes, and it's almost spring. Spring is next week. Uh, no leaves are on the trees yet, um, and there's no plant life in this section of my garden. Um, we're about to change that. So when I moved here, there was a couple of really old rhododendrons kind of dotting this section of the yard, um, but they looked like they had been planted 50 years ago, and they were basically at the end of their life cycle. So I had those removed, and now it's time to make a new flower bed. So first, I want to show you guys how to basically start this new flower bed, start a new, um, or border, whatever you want to call it, by removing sod, and then um, I'm going to be creating what I hope to be a deer resistant, uh, a deer resistant garden, because if you've been here a while, you know I have a lot of deer problem around here, and um, I just can't bite the bullet and pay for a fence. So I have been experimenting with different deer resistant plants, but that'll come later on. Um, for now, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you know that you need to do is determine where you want to actually be creating your bed. I have determined that I want to basically connect this bed and let's bring it all the way. Come here, Samantha. And I want to bring it, come in, come in a little closer. So, and I want to bring it basically to around here. And um, the reason is because right here is, ba is the exhaust to my heater, to my furnace in my basement. And then here is my air conditioner. I don't want to be blocking those with plants, um, particularly plants that would be by that exhaust are going to get burned probably in the winter time. So I'm basically going to end it here and hopefully have enough height to visually block uh, the air conditioner and that exhaust, all right? So you can see I have this hose out here. The purpose of the hose is basically to help me create a nice um, straight line so that I can ensure that the garden bed is like, is, is correct. You can also do this with like uh, spray paint if you want. Um, but a lot of us have hoses. You know, this is even a pretty long bed and it seems to be reaching all right. So just a nice kind of straight line. Um, there's really, you know, there's, I'm not a fan of doing kind of any sort of like undulating lines. I find that that just kind of complicates things. Um, so just like a nice arc here is about all of the undulation that we really need, okay? Now comes the hard work, which is actually the removal of the sod. So basically what I'm gonna do, slowly but surely, I'm gonna, I have this squared off uh, shovel and um, I'm basically just gonna follow the line of this hose and then we'll start to remove it, okay? Show them how it's done, babe. Say hi to the camera. Hi. All right, so what I've been doing with my squared off uh, shovel, um, basically going around, I went around and just made a line along the exterior, slowly but surely. And then I come on the inside about a foot away from that line and I do a second line right here. After I do that, I make it, I square it off, and then you can even do another one if you want right in the middle. And that will help you to really take the sod off as best as possible, just like that. That's how it goes, all right? So we're gonna keep going. This is about 150 square foot um, bed that we're building, so I'll see you in about three weeks. <laughs> All right. Okay, so after about three hours removing sod, I think I found what the best technique was. Um, so I used, like, you, like I had shown, using this squared off shovel um, to kind of make the lines, make that clean line around the bed, and then kind of cutting it in half to make like rectangles. Once you have all those like rectangles um, created, 
going in with your pointed digger shovel, you can kind of just slide underneath that turf and get, you know, maybe two, three inches of that turf and lo as little soil as possible. Um, when I was using this guy, I was getting way too much ground with it and it was harder than it needed to be. And, um, you know, you want to leave as much soil in there as possible. All right. <clears throat> So now you can see with me here, I've got the next part of the journey. So here I have 10 bags of, what is this, like natural and organic potting mix. Um, I have some mulch, another 10 bags. What is it, like a total of 20, no, one, two, three, four, five. I have 20 cubic feet of the potting mix. And then I have, I think, 20 cubic feet of the mulch and then I also have some sand now the reason I got sand I'll show you here in a minute is that so I finished clearing out my bed a week ago and in the last week we've had some you know spring showers and I've been able to notice like I knew that area of my of the yard kind of like trapped water and kind of didn't have great drainage so that's kind of one of the benefits of doing this in a multi-day function, in a, in a multi-day fashion. As you can see, if there's any spots of your garden beds that do kind of hold on to moisture after it rains, and there definitely are, and I'm going to be using some sand. Now, this isn't the best sand to use. Um, I wish I had some coarser grind of sand, um, but it's all that you know Home Depot had right now at the very beginning of spring. Maybe in, later in the season they'll have more bags. But anyway, so now that um, the bed is nice and free of any sod, now we're going to mix, start mixing in first the sand, then the potting mix, and then the mulch on top. All right, so here you can see the bed is all nice and cleared out. And you can see, you know, there's some areas that are just a little bit moist, uh, a little bit moist, and it's been a couple days since it's rained. So those areas particularly, I'm gonna make sure and um, put the sand in there and work it into the soil before adding the potting mix and then the mulch. All right, so the best way, if you're wondering how much exactly of the soil, potting mix and um, mulch to get, the best way to do it is measure out how big of an area you've got. I measured this to be 150 square feet. And then you can just do like online mulch calculator and that can, you know, that'll spit out how much, how many cubic um, feet, cubic yards of mulch that you actually are going to be needing. Um, so now that I have my sand here, I'm just going to start by opening it up and kind of spreading it out as much as possible. Now with the sand, I'm just, I kind of just did a, I don't know, a guesstimation. I don't know if I'll have enough. I don't need to hold, have sand everywhere, just in some of the main poor drainage areas. All right, so it's not a ton of sand, but it should probably be enough for what I want. Just a little added drainage. I'm just gonna start raking it down. It's really just this front of the bed that doesn't have great drainage. Okay, so now I'm just going to do, just barely work it in. Um, you know, as the seasons go on, natural rainfall, I get stuff planted in here. Everything will start to assimilate on its own. I don't think it's that important to really work it into the soil. All right, so the next step is laying out your bags of the potting mix. Um, I like to lay, you know, a lot uh, more bags to the back of the garden bed. And because I'm gonna be raking it, things are gonna naturally come forward. Um, so that's kind of my strategy. It's definitely better and way more, way less expensive if you do like a bulk delivery. I didn't have time. You know, the bags, I, I hate the bags and they're expensive, but it's easier than you know, having it dumped somewhere and then shoveling it into a wheelbarrow and then shoveling it back into the garden bed. You know, that, that method takes a lot more time, but it is way more cost effective than just doing the bags. So while I'm emptying these, Samantha's gonna be 
trying to rake it out and making it nice and even. We're gonna look for like a two inch coverage of the potting mix across the bed in entirety. It's always much better and way faster if you have someone to help. All right, so once you get all of your potting mix or compost, whatever you might be using on top, I like potting mix. You could use just like um, any sort of bagged compost. That would be perfect just as well. So once you get it all raked out, try to get like a two inch thickness of that potting mix. Now I like to right away add mulch on top. And the reason is because when we're removing that sod, what we might be doing is, you know, there's lots of weeds that are kind of maybe dormant underneath that soil. And once we start to remove that sod, we start shaking things up. You know, light is now hitting things that it wasn't hitting previously. You can get some of those weeds to start really to, you know, ignite, initi uh, initiate and start growing. So by adding the two inches of potting mix and then another two inches of the mulch, that four inches should keep those potential weeds at bay. Now, you know, one thing I wanted to talk about was how much time to give yourself. I'd give yourself three days to complete a project like this. Um, you know, one day to gather the materials, one day to remove the sod, and one day to add your top amendments like the soil and the mulch and um, the barriers for around the beds. Um, definitely the the hardest part I think for a lot of us is you know having a vehicle to transport 20 bags of mulch and soil so I would recommend do a one day rental of like a U-Haul truck um, you can do that relatively inexpensively and you pay like for the mile if you have a Home Depot or a garden center nearby um, you can do you know rent it uh, for one day $20 and maybe like another 10 bucks for you know all the mileage that way you can get as many bags as possible in one single trip it's such a hassle going back and forth back and forth to get more material so really try to do that all in one fell swoop if possible removing that sod took about four hours and then doing this last part is probably you know another three hours so in total you can do it all in, in three days maybe a total of like 10 12 hours um, for the project um, and yeah, so next step, now that we have it all raked out, we're gonna start to do the mulch. Okay, so what I'm using is a natural cedar mulch. Um, I recommend using uh, a natural wood bark mulch rather than plastic, uh, like plastic chips. Those aren't good for anything. Um, well, okay, they have a couple of benefits, but this will be better for your soil, for your plants in the long run, trust me. Um, now, if you have other beds like I do that have a different color of mulch, it doesn't matter who cares because after a season or two, they're all going to kind of look the same. But also more so than that is the idea for mulch is it's kind of a placeholder. You use mulch until you have the right plant material or you have enough plants, um, you know, where you can buy in your, you know, you can, your budget allows you to buy enough plants to cover the entire bed with plant material particularly ground covers. Um, I'm gonna be using a few different ground covers in this garden bed, um, which, you know, over a course of a season or two, maybe three, eventually the idea is to not see any of the mulch, just have plant material. So in this particular bed, um, I'm gonna be creating a deer resistant garden. That's the idea. You guys have been around a while, you know the deer eat everything. I planted, you know, 20 hydrangeas that Gone, gone by the wayside. So I'm gonna be planting um, a pallet of deer resistant plants. Hopefully uh, they do resist the deers. And um, so stay tuned as I, you know, as I get plants established and I'll be filming, recording exactly what I'm putting in that bed. So while she's raking out the mulch, what I'm gonna be doing is um, I'm gonna be putting some edging around that border of the bed. Um, I'm using some stones that are basically just all over my backyard. I've just been kind of collecting them. Um, you can use a variety of like different kind of like plastic barriers, um, anything to really kind of just define the edge of that bed to the grass. You know, stones, it's a very like, you know, cottage gardeny vibe, which is the vibe that I like in my gardening style. If you have more of a, you know, a concrete kind of style, um, you can use like, 
uh, what do you call what is this, that one kind of steel, you know, steel edging. A lot of my friends back in Seattle would design gardens with that. Looks very sleek, very chic. Um, not my style, but might be your style. So tons of options. Just do a little searching online and you'll definitely find something that suits you. All right, so I think that we have finished. We just got done laying all of our stones, create a nice defined edge. I think it looks really nice. Um, having a defined edge, if, if it's not your style, then, then don't, don't mess with it. But um, you can see the mulch is still a little bit wet, so I was having trouble kind of really raking it out. Once it dries out a little bit, I'll come back and, and flatten it out a little bit better. But one of the things you really wanna keep in mind while you are laying both that potting mix and the mulch is that we wanna give um, as, minimal foot traffic on our beds as possible. Um, we remember from you know plant uh, biology 101 that uh, plants roots need air and that air comes in the you know it's in the soil there's pockets of air in the soil. We want to keep that air in there. We don't want to step on the soil, compact it and eliminate all of that nice air which will help our plants roots thrive. So keep that in mind while you are creating your project. Uh, but anyway, so I think that's, you know, the basic steps for starting a flower bed from scratch. Um, if you have any further questions, definitely leave a comment below. There's millions of ways of doing this. If you do it a different way, leave a comment as well. Share your thoughts, share your experiences and your ideas, how you create your flower bed, uh, how you created your flower bed at your house. Um, I, you know, that's how we share the plant knowledge. That's how we build our plant community. Anyways, thank you for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. You guys know I post a longer video like this one every Sunday morning, and then I try to do a short video throughout the week. So if you haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. You know, we're, our plant community is, is slowly but surely growing. Um, it's been fun to watch the evolution take place, and I hope that you've been enjoying the ride as well. And think about giving this video a like if you enjoyed it, if you thought the, con the content was, uh, you know, informative and helpful. Anyways, I will catch you guys soon on the next episode of Plant Vibrations. Catch you guys soon. Ciao.